Hello everyone. Today our topic on computer system architecture course is arithmetic pipeline. In the last two videos we discussed parallel processing and pipelining in general. Pipeline arithmetic units are usually found in very high speed computers. They are used to implement floating point operations, multiplication of fixed point numbers, and similar computations encountered in scientific problems. The general form of a floating point number is x equals a multiplied by r to the power small a, where capital A is called the mantissa. R is the base or radix of the numbering system and decimal 10 in binary 2, and small a is the exponent. For example, the number 25 can be written in different forms, such as 25 multiplied by 10 to the power 0, or 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the power one or 0.25 10 to the power two or 250 10 to the power minus one etc the next definition we need is the normalization a normalized fraction is a fraction with non-zero digit and the most significant bit. For example, from these forms, this is the normalized fraction form. So if we have the number, for example, 0, 0, 5, 6, multiplied by 10 to the power 3, in order to normalize it, we we'll have here zero five six, but we have in this case to decrease the exponent by one. And if we have the number two three four ten to the power one, in order to normalize it, and we have to increase the exponent in this case by two. Next, we have two floating point x equals a multiplied by r to the power small a and y equals b multiplied by r to the power small b. In order to multiply to these floating point numbers, we have to multiply the matrices and to add the exponents. And in order to divide these numbers, we have to divide the matrices and subtract the exponents. However, in the case of adding or subtracting two floating point numbers, the scenario is different. We cannot add or subtract the matrices in this case directly. We have to make the exponents equal. For example, if we have two normalized floating point numbers in decimal and y equals 0.37 multiplied by 10 to the power three, we can make the exponent equal by increasing the smallest one. In this case, the difference is one. So in order to make the first exponent three, we have to shift right the mantissa. And three, in this case, 
will be the exponent for the result. Now we can add the two matrices to obtain the sum. And really we are adding the first number is 25 and the second is 370 and the sum 593 is correct. The plotting point addition and subtraction can be performed in four segments. The registers are here. are placed between the segments to store intermediate results. Or as I mentioned in the previous video, they act as buffers. The sub operations that are performed in the four segments are compare the exponents, align the matrices, add or subtract the matrices depending on the operation, and normalize the result. The two exponents are subtracted in the first segment and the largest exponent is chosen as the exponent of the result. The next segment shifts the matrix of the number with the smallest exponent to right by n positions where n is the difference obtained here. In sigma T3, the matrices are added or subtracted. In sigma 4 the sum or difference should be adjusted by normalizing the result so that it has a fraction with a non-zero digit. The first digit should be non-zero. And this is done by shifting right and incrementing the exponent by one. As another example, suppose that x equals 0.35 and the exponent is 3 and y equals 27 and the exponent is 5. We first compare these two exponents, 5 minus 3 equals 2 the difference and we choose the largest one as the exponent of the result. Next we shift the matrix here by two times. So the first number after shifting is 0035 and this is equivalent to the same value here. Now we add the matrices, so here 5, 3, 7, 2. And this is our result. In this case, we do not need to perform anything in the last segment since the result is a normalized fraction. And as another example, suppose that x equals 9, 5, multiplied by 10 to the power 3 and y equals 8 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 2. Here the difference is calculated 3 minus 2 equals 1 and the exponent of the result is chosen to be 3. Here exponent equals 3. And we have to align the matrix of y by shifting it to the right one position. So now y equals 10 to the power 3. And now the numbers are under the same exponent. In the next segment, we can add the matrices 9, 5 plus. 8, 2, and the result is 2, 3, 0, and we have here a carry 1. 
So on this stage, we need to normalize the result. And this is done by shifting this value one position to the right and increasing the exponent by one. And here is our final result. The compare circuit shifter, adder subtractor, and increment decrement operations are implemented with the combinational logic circuits. Suppose that the delays in segment one, 40 nanoseconds, in segment two, 60 nanoseconds, in segment three, 80 nanoseconds, and in segment four, 50 nanoseconds. And the delay in all registers, 10 nanoseconds. And if you are given the delay for one register, you can multiply this delay by the number of registers. Here we have the total delay in all registers. In a pipeline system, the clock cycle should be chosen. The maximum value, 80 plus the delay in the registers, which is 90 nanoseconds. An equivalent non-pipeline floating point at subtract circuit will have a delay of all these values plus the delay in registers. We have 40 plus 60 plus 80 plus 50 and plus 10. 180, which is 240 nanoseconds. In this case, the speed up ratio is 240 over 90, which is 2.67. Our topic in the next lecture is instruction pipeline. For today, that's all. Thank you.